How are you all? Let's get all caught up with some of the day's top stories and headlines. Does that sound good? Take you on a little national tour just to get all caught up with everything, everything that's going on. This first story I have for you. For decades, America's largest spy planes, known as U-2 reconnaissance aircrafts, have been patrolling the skies and gathering intel for the military. Its missions are highly classified and rarely known to Americans. Now the military is offering a behind the scenes look. The plane is going up on display at the California Capitol Air Show this weekend. Fox's Pedro Rivera got to climb on board early to give us a first hand look inside. This is the U-2 recon plane, and it is massive. From wingtip to wingtip is 103 feet. That's larger than an NBA basketball court flying in the sky at 70,000 feet. These planes are used for reconnaissance missions, gathering images from overseas from above the clouds. And when the plane touches down, images are processed by Airman Andrew Moore. It's going to come to us in a big green light type case. You may not believe this. Despite the latest technology, the United States Air Force still develops film. People can't believe it, especially when we, when we get younger airmen, you know, fresh out of high school who, you know, they don't quite know what a Polaroid is or, the, you know, they don't, they don't know what the clicky, uh, the clicky cameras are. Moore's responsible for developing massive rolls of film each time the U-2 returns from a mission. From start to finish, the entire process can take anywhere between 12 to 15 hours to complete. This process is much more complex than your average roll of film developed at the pharmacy. We're dealing with two miles worth of film, whereas, you know, a little Kodak, you know. Uh, so not the yeah. same as when yeah. you go to yeah. the Yeah, not, not quite, not quite. No. This is the final product, again, from 70,000 feet in the sky, and the images are unbelievable. I want to show you what they look like here. In great detail, you can see the streets, trees, cars driving around from overseas, taken from so high above yet so detailed every single image. Moore says he enjoys seeing how the technology has changed and at the same time stayed the same since the U-2 was introduced in the 1950s. This process has followed the U-2. You know, when U-2 was around, this process was, was around. So it's a little bit of new meets old, old meets new, and they just, they meet in the middle. At Beale Air Force Base, Pedro Rivera, Fox 40 News. New meets old and old meets new. That's what he just said, right? <laughs> okay. This next story. For decades, taking a low dose aspirin every day has been considered a way to protect against heart disease and even cancer. But a recent study suggests that long term usage for older people who have not already had a heart attack or stroke could be harmful. Fox's Dina Centofanti has the details from Detroit. Millions of people are doing it every day, but is it the right move? We're talking about taking a daily low dose of aspirin. A new study just came out that looked at Americans and Australians who were healthy, yet taking this aspirin every day. And the study found in some cases, the risks outweigh the benefits. What does it all mean? Let's talk to cardiologist Dr. Saba, Ascension Providence Hospital. Doctor, first of all, explain to us what taking a low dose of aspirin does for our body. So aspirin is a blood thinner. Even though it's over-the-counter, simple medication, it is a blood thinner. It does uh, prevent having a stroke or heart attack in certain populations. Okay, tell us the takeaway from this study, because again, these were people who weren't necessarily at risk, right? So it, the most important thing with this study, that this is, was used for primary prevention, meaning that these patients did not have apparent heart disease or prior stroke. We're trying to prevent the first event. And we found out that these patients really did not benefit and rather suffered some increased risk of bleeding complications. So the bottom line is, is even though it's available over the counter, baby aspirin, low dose aspirin, you shouldn't take it unless your doctor says you need to be taking it, right? Who needs to be taking it? Absolutely. Aspirin is a medication and like with all other medications, you should have a discussion with your doctors who should take it and who should not. Depending on your health and other comorbidities, you probably need it or you may not. Here's the question, should you be taking a daily aspirin? Let's get the doctor's advice. Dr. Saba, what do you tell your heart patients? If somebody had a prior heart attack, they should be on an aspirin. On the other hand, a healthy person with no significant risk factors, they should probably avoid it or at least have a discussion with their physician before taking it. Perfect. Yeah, talk to your doctor about your risk factors. Good information. Thanks, doctor. That's HealthWorks. I'm Dina Santafanti.
All right, Dina, thanks so much for that. Getting lots of viewer comments on that story on the YouTube chat. Remember, I'm the question host. I like to get to know you all better and you know, just see how often you watch news now. So let me get those hands up emojis if you were here last night watching what I called the Emmys red carpet, even though uh, it was technically a gold carpet. Yeah, were you here? Did you watch? Who were your favorite stars that you saw? All right. <laughs> this next story is kind of detailing the highlights Hollywood gathered to celebrate the 70th annual Emmy Awards. Many celebrities walked the gold carpet to show off their designer gowns, tuxedos, and more. Fox's Anita Vogel is giving us the highlights. We're on the Emmy Golden Carpet, where stars shine and strut their stuff. And oftentimes, what the stars are wearing play as big a role as the roles they play on TV. It's the show before the show at the 70th Annual Emmy Awards, where many of TV's biggest stars create memorable moments, rocking fashion trends and voicing their thoughts on hot topic issues. This is surreal. That's the word. I'm just trying to breathe. Try and keep it, keep it cool as a cucumber. I'm loving that I get to enjoy my life with amazing people that I make a TV show with. I get to meet amazing people. I'm honestly blessed. After last season's blackout attire supporting gender equality and the Time's Up movement, the ladies returned to color, brightening the carpet with lots of flowers and some added sparkle. Sometimes you just put some on and it feels like, yep, yeah, this is what they want. <laughs> this just came off the runway about a week ago and that was incredibly lucky. The women weren't the only ones shining. Many of the men traded in classic tuxes for statement-making suits. It wasn't really me, it was my stylist. It was my stylist, Lulu, and she, she's like, let's go a little bit, a little bit bolder this time, because I've always stuck pretty traditional. Making another kind of fashion statement, Blackish star Jennifer Lewis wore a sparkly Nike sweater in support of the brand featuring controversial footballer Colin Kaepernick in its new ad campaign. It is the artist's duty to reflect the times. And these are not dark times, these are awakening times. And with streaming platforms now dominating the industry and award shows, we wanted to know is binge watching a bad habit or now just plain necessary? You're watching the novel and we get to shoot the novel. You just need time to do it. You need a good free weekend and I haven't had that lately. There are times when I, when I stream too much, when I go too, too bingy, and then I can't remember one episode from the next. You know, that, that's the only thing. Things become a little blurry if you, if you binge too hard. In Hollywood, Anita Vogel, Fox News. Is that a word? That word that he just said with the B. I'm not going to repeat it, but is it a word? <laughs> Speaking of streaming, hey, you're watching a stream. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Okay, this next top story I have for you with the holiday season coming up. Yeah, I can't believe I'm reading this. It's approaching sooner rather than later. Many communities finding unique ways to give back. One senior citizen home right here in Arizona making a difference in the lives of the homeless by putting their talents to use. Our very own Marcy Jones has the story. You can't get rid of all of them. At first glance, this group of spunky seniors may look like your run-of-the-mill sewing circle, but that all changes once you find out what they're working on. One of the things that they enjoy most is uh, sewing, and so they're taking their skills and they're putting together these little knapsacks that double as um, uh, pads for the homeless. Greater than their love for thread and needle is their desire to help others. These women, all residents of Fellowship Square Historic Mesa, have been on a mission to help the less fortunate. And the community is joining in. And we're getting a lot of wonderful donations for items that they can put inside them that will be useful to them. Um, things like food and snacks from our friends at Fry's Foods and uh, a lot of personal items like shampoos and soaps and toothbrushes and things like that, some personal donations. It's something staff at Fellowship Square Historic Mesa says makes everybody feel good. For the residents, um, it's really important to them to have an opportunity to have purpose and feel like they're giving to the community. Those who need a purpose, finding it by helping others. And that's the best type of circle. And of course, to the homeless, you know, for them to know that people in the community care about them. Marcy Jones, Fox 10 News. So sweet. So absolutely sweet.
Okay, one more top story for you. How Amazon says it's helping small biz and how much longer your commute has gotten. Fox's Fox Business Network's Tracy Carrasco has today's Fox Business Briefs. So uh, what's your commute like, either to work or school? Do you go to both? Is one longer than the other? Let's watch. Amazon launched a new section of its site called Amazon Storefronts, which only lists products sold by small and medium-sized businesses in the U.S. Amazon wanted a way for shoppers to find them more easily because these smaller companies can get lost among its millions of goods. The Census Bureau says commuters spent an extra 2.5 hours in transit last year. The average commute time was 26.9 minutes, up from years past. New York is at the top of the list, 37 minutes one way. That's business. For more, log on to foxbusiness.com. In New York, I'm Tracy Carrasco.